Oh, that's terrific. Well, as always, you're invited to come worship up front if you'd like to. Seek the Lord up front. All right. So appreciative of you being here today, and we're going to have a tremendous time in the house of the Lord. Steve Backlund's going to be preaching. We're so excited about that. It's going to be awesome. We do want to recognize, we probably have some graduates in the room and parents of graduates. How many of you graduated this week? Anybody? Graduates this week? There we go. Okay. Congratulations. Well done. That's a pretty important milestone, so terrific. There we go. We were out at Foothill getting rained on. Only one lightning strike. Wasn't so bad. <laughs> We're all in the grandstands counting 1,001, 1,002, 1,000. <laughs> it was far away. We didn't even hear the thunder. So, well, today is going to be tremendous. As always, I hope you've come with expectation and anticipation. I'd encourage you to stir up your faith before you get here. Maybe not to come here ready to, like, okay, Bethel, see if you can get me going. But actually, I brought a gift. I brought my own fire to the house. I brought my own faith to the house uh, for, for to see the, the power and the presence of the Lord poured out in this place. So we're going to pray for ourselves that we would just be in, just to be able to enter into the presence of the Lord. We're talking about the storm. We were, uh, one, of the, one of the storms that hit earlier in the week, man, that it was so close to our house, it actually hit the top of a tree and drove a branch through the roof of a house just across the street. And we were all home, and so we're like, the lightning goes, we go, Thuh, and then boom, you know, the thunder hit right there, and the thunder bent the window pane. You ever been by a window and the thunder goes, Wah! and so, <laughs> and we got that nervous excitement, like, ha, 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 all right, <laughs> are, we, are we safe? <laughs> but it, it, as I was praying for you this morning, as the leaders were, we, we just, I was praying, Lord, bend the window pane with your presence this morning. Hit with power, hit close by. And where we talk about, oh yeah, one of those strikes, where we talk about how, you know, uh, how near the Lord is, it's beautiful, but he is a consuming fire. He is full of power and worthy of our absolute reverence. Turn your hearts to the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, bend the window. <laughs> May your presence fall strong and powerful. I ask for healing to happen as we're worshiping. I would pray, Lord, that there'd be healing in relationships, even uh, ideas that like aren't from you, that you would do an idea endectomy. You would like take that idea and say, beloved, that, that's never been true. It's not true. There's no life there. That you would actually meet us in this moment of worship. And as we find ourselves giving to you, we would realize you have given to us. You are a giver. And we again stand in your covenant love your covenant affection, and ask for an anointing that we would declare your praises with power. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, if you're worshiping on, on, online as well, jump in with power, turn up the volume, stand up, do whatever you can do, but let's get, enjoy the Lord's presence. Feel free to come up front if you'd like to worship.
love you, God. We love you, we love you. Thank you that we get to come to a place and just experience you, God. We, you are with us, you are Emmanuel, God with us, and we receive your grace today. You know, as I was sitting here worshiping this morning, I felt God gave me a scripture for you. And I wanna read it to you. It's 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, cast all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on Him. For He cares about you with the deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. You know, Spurgeon talked about this analogy of someone that came to move your furniture, but when he got there, he had this massive backpack on and he was weighed down. And so he went, when he did the work for you, he couldn't do it because he was so heavy, he just didn't have it in him. And he said, that's what it's like when we as believers come into, into the work of the gospel, the, you know, the things that God's called us to, if we don't know how to lay down our heavy burdens and our anxieties, then when God asks to do, us to do something, we feel like it's impossible. There's no way we can do what's in front of us. But when we let go of the burden of the, the world and the things that come at us, we actually begin to have, the Bible says that His yoke is easy, His burden is light, and that's what it means. And I wanna just look at this for a minute because I feel like God's gonna do something in here right now. I sense a breakthrough moment and I, I really believe this. I saw business owners getting a breakthrough this morning. I saw moms that have kids at home for the summer. They're getting a breakthrough. I felt like there were even family members. Uh, I felt like there were strategic things that you need wisdom around. And I felt that the Lord said, if you'll lean into this moment, you'll get some clarity and some freedom and you'll get breakthrough and you'll, you'll have the, the strength to do it. So I want us to look at that scripture because he says to cast your cares. Now that doesn't mean lay down your cares. In fact, in the, in the Greek, it means that you actually have to take both hands and throw it away from you. Yesterday we went bowling. Have you been bowling before, right? And you know that when you take a bowling ball, you hold both hands and then you push it down. You have to cast it away from you. And it is an energetic, active, faith, like lifestyle thing that we do as believers. And so for some of us, we come to God and we're like, I'll give you my anxiety if you take it and I'll lay it down if I'm tired. But God goes, no, being an active believer is taking those things that wanna weigh us down, hold us back, keep us in bondage, and we actually actually take it and cast it away, say, no, this is not serving me. It's not serving my future. It's not serving my kids and my grandkids and my finances. So we have to actively, and I thought about for some of us in the family, we had to use the bumpers on the bowling lane. Do you know what I mean? The bumpers. Do you know as Christians, we have bumpers with our bowling ball? We have something called prayer and we have something called faith. And both of those things allow us to take those anxieties and fears and get them down away from us but it takes prayer to say, actually, I'm not arrogant. I don't think I can do life alone without God's help. I actually don't think I know how to make the best decisions. I'm not the best parent. I'm not the best spouse. I need, I need honestly prayer. I need to tell you what I need. But secondly, I need faith to believe that the God who told me I could do it actually will help me do it. And the God that called me out will call me in. And so today I felt like there's a divine exchange, but it's gonna require a casting of your anxiety, your fear, your inadequacies, your insecurities, whatever it is. And so today, if you feel like that word is right now, it's not a lack of faith. It's not a lack of being a believer. It's like a, it's a spiritual practice that we have to do. There are some of you that are in high school and your anxiety is, what am I gonna do this summer? And what about this relationship? And what about this sports moment or whatever it is? Some of you are at a place with your kids. And so if you are dealing I'm not saying that you're accepting it, but you feel this like, oh, there's something in this moment that I want to actively cast away my anxieties. I want to receive grace to get that stuff away from me because my burden is heavy, my yoke is heavy, and I want a light burden, I want a light yoke. If that's you, would you courageously lift your hand and say, I, I need that in my life, right? I want you to look around. If somebody's standing next to you, I want you just to, to put your hand on them. There's a lot of people, so if you don't, if you have your hand up, it's okay. The good news is the Holy Spirit's got His hands on you right now. But I, I want us, listen, I feel like there's someone today that has a, a strategic business to that's happening and you're pushing forward but you have anxiety and you feel fear around it and it's not normal for you to feel that way maybe you're watching today and 
God wants to give you the ability to cast it far from you, that you would lead and parent and become in peace, not in anxiety, not in worry. So Lord, we ask, let's pray together as a church because we are anointed as a church to pray for the church. Lord, I pray right now for a casting, a divine exchange. Lord, whatever is holding us back mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, Lord, we ask you right now that you would give us the faith and the prayer and the humility to say, no, I'm not going to accept the burden. I cannot do what you call me to do with a burden. And I ask right now for breakthrough over the minds and hearts of every man and woman in this room, including myself, God. We look to you, the author and the finisher, the one that begins and ends in our life. And I pray for a divine exchange. Lord, I want you just to take it symbolically, take that bowling ball of anxiety and fear, and maybe it's grief or maybe it's the unknown. And I want you just to symbolically take that wherever you are and just and, and begin to kind of cast it away from you. Take it and go, this is yours, God. It takes two hands to get it away from me. It takes two, it takes energetic effort to say, no, I'm not bowing down to fear. I'm not bowing down to anxiety. I'm not, I'm not parenting in fear. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a believer. And Lord, I pray this week specifically that faith and prayer would be would be our mandate. Prayer, Lord, give us a heart to pray. We get to tell you everything that's burdening us. Nothing is too much. We do not exhaust you, God. Thank you, God. And Lord, in faith that we believe that whatever you've started, you will be faithful to complete. I know, I, I don't wanna belabor it, but somebody here, I really feel this, is some biz, something in the business world that you are at a crossroads and you're feeling tremendous weight. Maybe it's for your employees. Maybe it's for the purchase of your business. It's something where you, it's a business directed and you feel like this is part of it. If that's you, just lift your hand. Say, that's me. I felt that very, yep, I felt that very specifically. Lord, I declare over these men and women that the, the, the decision that needs to be made today would be made. There would be a breakthrough, God, and that they would feel peace and as the word comes today, there would be a, a clarity to know what to do, to, be, to, to sell, to buy, to let go, to hire, whatever it is, God, you would give them freedom. For some of you, it's parenting. You, you, maybe your kid's sitting next to you. You don't have to lift your hand, but I felt this, that God wants to give you a peaceful summer. I just declare that over you, that you don't need to be anxious about having everybody home and making sure that they, at camp they have the encounter and making sure that they you know, are monitoring their choices. But I just pray right now that there would be a peaceful summer, that we would lean into your burden, we would lean into your yoke. Lord, forgive us for believing we can do it without you. We cannot do it without you. We need a savior and you are the one. And so we lean into you. Lord, there are, there are question marks about things in our life. And we say, God, we don't have to have every answer for you to be Lord of our life. We don't have to know how it's all gonna work out. We trust you, God, that you are the one that holds the mystery, the question mark, the good news, the bad news, the sad news, Lord, we trust you. And thank you, Jesus. Can we just take a minute? Let's lift your hands for just a minute. I have the mic so I can just do one more minute, right? I'm teasing. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless your summer of 2023. I bless your coming and your going. I bless your finances. I bless your marriages. I bless your, your body and your physical health. I, I bless the, the coming and the going of what's happening in your life. And I pray that this summer, I just declare it's gonna be a summer of breakthrough in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in your finances. And I thank you, God, that this is a divine season for all of us today. And I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Look at the person next to you and just say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Give them a hug. High five. Will you join me in just thanking our worship team again for that incredible time in His presence. Well, welcome. We are so thankful that you are with us this morning, whether you're in our overflow room here or joining us on Bethel TV. 
There are a couple of seats around our main sanctuary. If you do have a seat that's available next to you, will you just take one second, just pop your hand up. If you're against the walls and you're looking for a seat right now, they have saved a seat for you. You can go and sit with them. Um, If you, that's great. You can lower your hand and we wanna make, just take a special moment right now If you are a first time visitor uh, here at Bethel, if you are online, you can let them know in the chat. And if you are in either of our rooms right now, would you just raise your hand to indicate I am a first time visitor. Bethel family, can we welcome them? And thank them for joining us. I can see these hands all around the room. That's incredible. Would you just leave your hand raised, first time visitors, and our anointed, amazing ushers who volunteer and change all of our lives are coming around and they have a card for you. There's a ton of visitors who are at the the back right. Where are you guys joining us from? There's a ton of visitors over here. I can see you talking to our ushers. Where are you guys from? Switzerland, that's amazing. That's so fun. That's so, so exciting. And then I saw a whole group over here in our middle section. Where are you guys joining us from? If you're first time visitors, just raise your hand again for me. You're in the middle center. There was like a ton of you. Kansas City, City, amazing. And then this family over here, where are you joining us from? Singapore, that's amazing. So, so fun. And then someone wants representation over here in the middle. Oregon. Okay, neighbors, we love you, Oregon. Oh, oh, okay. And then over here, where are you joining us from? Ghana. That's amazing. Thank you, Jesus, for our brothers and sisters in Ghana. That is so incredible. We're so glad that you joined us. And if you want any information about any of the videos or slides that are coming up in just a moment, you can make your way to our information desk. That is in our South Lobby. lobby, And we have amazing men and women who are part of this church that are here to connect with you and help you get plugged into the local church. And then if you missed last Sunday and did not get one of these handouts, it's called Summer at Bethel. Throughout the whole of summer, our pastors have set up incredible moments of connection and fun for our local body. And if you're visiting, you are welcome to jump in with us. That is going to change your life, especially parents. If you're wondering, what do I do? We love you. Why don't we roll church announcements? Hey, Bethel family. Uh, We got uh, Havila here and her dog, and we have some updates for you. Here's this week's church news. Brave Co Conference is coming up June 21st through the 23rd. And if you're a guy, man, we want you to show up. It's gonna be an amazing time. It's gonna be phenomenal. You should definitely come. Yeah, it's true. And we need volunteers to pull this event off. So if you're a woman or a man, you are welcome to come help us. And we'll throw in a conference volunteer shirt uh, as our gift to you. Uh, There's no reason to skip it. You should come. It's gonna be awesome. If you want more information about volunteering or attending, you can visit us at Bethel.com slash events. Bethel Kids Camp is coming July 24th through the 26th, and we're welcoming all K through third graders to come join us for a few days of encounter, connection, and fun. And on the final day, moms, dads, siblings, everybody is welcome to come and encounter the Lord together through activations, worship, prophetic ministry, and so much more. So plan on being there. Foster Shasta is a bi-weekly home group that supports foster parents and adoptive parents. Foster Shasta is hosting a parent education night on July 25th where all are invited to come and learn how to manage our children's triggers and stress responses. Space is limited, so register at Bethel.com slash church news. We wanna invite you to the Bethel Music Worship School happening this summer, July 17th through the 21st. And we have some incredible guests coming. Cece Winans, Nathan Finocchio, hysterical and awesome, brilliant, Abby Gamboa, and so many more. It's a powerful week full of worship, training, connection, it's all of it. So they put together a short video so you can learn more. CC Winans. Hey 
guys, we just wanted to invite you to our Bethel Music Worship School this summer. We've been doing worship school for over 20 years, and it's incredible every single year what happens just being in the room. The worship times are really, really special. The guests that come and speak and lead worship and just what God does in this week is really profound. We have the school to equip people, to help people in their journey, whether it's on an instrument or leading worship. And really it's just to raise up the next generation of worshipers. Worship school this year is July 17th to the 21st. You can sign up at BethelMusic.com. Well, that's it for this week's church news. If you missed any of these announcements, go to Bethel.com slash church news to learn more and have an amazing week. The people who have captured our hearts, they are the type of people who, for the sake of following Christ, they have lost everything. I honestly always prayed, Lord, let me become like them. Mm -hmm. I want to lay my life down just like they are doing in serving you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Benji, and this is my wife, Daniela. We have three sons, Ruben, Josh, Tim. I thought God will lead us to Africa, to the mission field, because that's my history but he surprised us big time. It happened that we had a missionary come to the Bible College where we both were studying, mm -hmm. and he asked me what my vision and my heart was, and I said, I just want to train people. And then he said, you are the guys I need in Asia. And we said, why not? I remember being in worship with the Asian Bride of Christ yeah. and something in my heart just shifted. I can only say it was love at first yeah, sight for both of us. For both of yeah. us. Yeah. And that was such a defining moment. And I said to Lord, I lay down my life mm -hmm. for the Asian Bride of Christ. Yeah. The name of our ministry is called Kingdom Family Multiplication. The aim is to plant churches in unreached people groups. And the way we do that is by discipling near neighbors, equipping them, empowering the local lay leaders to go into those areas where there's no Christian witness, no church, and to go into that dark place and bring the light. The cool thing is, you know, they're often not famil familiar with the supernatural, with the kingdom culture, the, the orphan to sonship. We go to uttermost places and train those people all the way to no limits of the kingdom. So on healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead. We had 13 people raised from the dead. And it's by these local people who are just out there equipped and they do it. And they don't even ask much questions. <laughs> they don't know very much and they just go after it. It's really transforming places because we need to give people an encounter. They need to, to see the demonstration of the kingdom. We have an amazing story uh, from Southeast Asia in a nation that was like, it was considered a graveyard for missionaries for 190 years of missions and hardly any fruit. The pastor family, they, they had like three churches over 15 years and things started to happen. And, and many people got saved over weeks and months to come. It's to the extent that over the last six years, they've, they've started close to 5,000 micro churches, from, from three churches to 5,000 in hundreds of villages. We were there last year in the summer, they baptized five and a half thousand people. We were in one baptism, 1,260 people on one morning, you know, gathering. The police was involved with regulating the traffic. It was crazy. We have a mandate to inherit nations and we are representing the greatest kingdom that ever existed on planet Earth. We are ambassadors of that kingdom and, and God is doing the rest. We ask and we receive. That's right. <laughs> You're going to get me wrecked here. I'm sorry. This is... We've been so excited to introduce the more family to you, but your response in receiving them 
is what is wrecking me the most because that's what we want so much is for our body to to feel connected to what God's doing because we're all one body. So the Morphs have been part of Bethel Leaders Network for a while. They're not totally new to Bethel, but they're new now as Bethel missionaries. And so I'm so excited. Y'all have embraced them today and yeah. They've been pioneering, as you heard, in many different unreached people group areas for the last 15 years. And you know, Jesus gives us all a mandate in Matthew 28, 19, when he says, go into all the world and make disciples. Yeah, you know, the Moore family are such a beautiful expression of something that in modern uh, missions we call disciple-making movements, or DMM for short. You know, it's a relatively new term, but actually it's not a new method. In fact, it's what Jesus implemented, right? He, he, he fed the masses, he preached to the masses, but he poured into 12. And through those 12 disciples, they multiplied and they, their followers multiplied and they turned the world upside down in a generation. And that's what uh, Benji and Daniela, those are the, the methods they're employing, just simple discipleship making uh, methods, and they're doing it so beautifully all across the 1040 window. They're actually involved in over 20 uh, disciple-making movements. And, you know, when we got to visit with them, they said, we're getting to live our dreams. And, you know, as a church, we're just excited to get behind them. And we want to thank you for the generous way you give to our general missions fund because it allows us to bring on new families uh, like the Morphs. So we we invite you to stop by our table in the back in the Hebrews lobby, pick up a prayer card for them. Uh, you can also jump on to the QR code here or the link for our online church family as well, just to get connected with them. There's uh, a link to their newsletter. You can follow them on social media, which will help you to pray. How do we pray for this family? Uh, there's also a link to their M account where you can give directly to them. It's M99 which I love that, it's prophetic because Jesus said, I'm willing to leave the 99 and go after the least, the last, and the lost. And that's exactly what the morphs are doing. We also just wanted to highlight, and there's a link on the website as well, to their newly released book called Prepare the Barns, Five Keys for a Global Harvest of Souls. And that, that phrase, prepare the barns, is actually, it came from a prophetic word from Bob Jones, who said, We're, we, we need to prepare for this end time revival. It's going to be such a massive harvest of souls that we need to prepare barns. And you know, we're doing that with a rise and build, but actually there's a way that all of us as families can prepare for this incoming harvest of souls. So as, as we watch that, I feel like God began to ignite something in some of you to see a people movement, a disciple-making movement. And, and if that was you, would you just raise your hand? Okay, I see one right there. Is someone going to help me hand out these books? Yeah, let's uh, keep your hand up. We're going to give one in this room and one to overflow, please. And you know, I just, I, I feel like as we were watching 1,260 people Raise your hand again, please, if that was you. Okay. As we were watching the video, 1,260 people get baptized in a country that previously was a graveyard for missions. I just sensed this fresh faith that we're going to see some mass baptisms right here in Reading. Amen? We're going to see some mass baptisms on the Sacramento River. Amen? And you know, this book isn't just for those of you that want to go to nations. It's actually for those of you that are fired up about seeing your neighbors come to Jesus. So I'd encourage you to pick that up in our bookstore. Or you can get it online as well. Uh, we're just excited uh, to get behind the Moore family. Amen? And now it's time for our normal tithes and offerings. Jamila. Jamila. Good morning, everyone. Oh, this is the time where we actually get to worship in our giving. And I've been sitting down here as we worship, singing songs about what God's done time and time again. And I'm just remembering his faithfulness. 
Uh, I can remember coming here and trusting the Lord completely, not having work, not knowing a soul, but he said, this is your house. This is where I want to plant you. This is where I want you to sow. And we were in such a hard place in our lives where we were learning to trust God because all of our livelihood came from the generosity of people. Generosity of people in this room um, who gave toward BSSM students, who gave anonymously, who would turn around on days and just say, hey, I feel like the Lord said to put this in your hand. Generosity of people just like you. Um, and I'm also reminded of a, a woman in First Kings, a widow who had a prophet come to her. She had her last few uh, ounces of flour and oil and she was approached by the prophet and he said, hey, I want to give you an opportunity. Uh, give me something to eat. Uh, the Lord said, you're supposed to provide for me. And she said, well, sir, I've only got this little bit left. I'm going to eat it, me and my son, and we're going to die. And he said, you know what? Make me a little bit before you do that. And she did. And the rest of the story, you'll find that she was not only blessed in the middle of a famine of her whole region, but her being blessed allowed her to build a whole part of her home on uh, addition onto her home for this prophet of the Lord. And, and years later, because she provided for him in her lack, because she provided for him when the rest of the world was trying to hoard for themselves, when her son took ill and died, she brought revival to her house because she could go to the prophet and say, hey, I need your help now. And he came and he re re actually resurrected her son. So I feel like the Lord is inviting those of you who may not be in the habit yet of trusting the Lord in your finances to jump in today to jump in and give what you feel like you don't have. There was a widow, Jesus noted, she gave two mites and it was the greatest of all the offerings received that day. I feel like that's an invitation to you. Would you stand as we give? And online, if you're not in the habit of giving, if, if giving God the tithe, the 10% is not yet your habit, this is a special day for you. I feel very strongly that the Lord prophetically is asking you to partner with him. Our missionaries, they go and they give their whole lives where we get to give our whole purse. I'm not telling you to give all of your money. I'm saying to give what God is due. He's due his 10%. He's due your trust and he's due your faith. We're going to read um, declaration number one. And we're going to declare some things over our finances like the man of God did over her. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God, we bless these. The ushers are going to be passing the bags. We bless this offering. We thank you for the covenant you've established in our giving to bless us. And we honor you back in the name of Jesus. And this morning, I'm really excited. Steve Backlund's going to come bring us a powerful word on hope. Would you please welcome him? Yes, amen, amen. Good morning. I remember when I was 14 years old, I grew up North Coast, California, by Eureka, about three hours west of here. I was a freshman in high school at Fortuna High School, and I surprisingly made the junior varsity basketball team. I did. Yeah, thank you. I, I was a, a late bloomer. Some of you in this room are late bloomers. What's going to happen in, in the days, you're going you're gonna to go through a growth spurt uh, in this next season that's going to astound you. So I made the team... And I was at the end of the bench in a game against Eureka in their big gym. And the, the coach got angry at one of the players on the floor. 
and wanted to take him out of the game. He looks down, the, and I hadn't, I hadn't hardly played at all. He looks down, Backland, get in there. <laughs> so I get into the game, and the moment I get into the game, there's this guy I know from the Eureka team who's talking trash to me. He's, 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 saying, he's, he's telling me, you know, you can't do it. You're no good. You know, I might have said some things about my mother. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and he was trying to intimidate me. He was trying to intimidate me. And I, I, that was a, and I was having self-doubt. Anybody ever had self-doubt? I was battling self-doubt myself. And then I've got a voice in my ear. Yank, 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 yank. I want to let you know the devil is a trash talker. <laughs> and we're going to go after today some things. We're going to go after how we think. We're going to, the, the title of this message is Fully Convinced, and it comes from a, one of the books I wrote, Fully Convinced, The Art of Decision Making, uh, Attaching Great Faith to Who We Are and to what we're doing. As a younger leader, I said, Lord, I can't wait until I do something great for you. And he said, Steve, instead of waiting to do something great for me, why don't you attach great faith to who you are and what you're doing now, and it will become great. And I was hearing that, that even in this meeting, the Lord's already released, he's already released breakthrough, but it's gonna increase. I was just over at the Twin View meeting. My wife, Wendy, was there, and she got healed of something in that meeting. She had had a two-week uh, pain in her leg. She had fallen, and she was taking ibuprofen and all that. And in that meeting during worship, she got healed. She testified about that. And people are getting healed today. So if you don't know me, I'm on staff here. Since 2008, met Bill Johnson, I think about 1990, got grafted into the family, was pastoring out in the desert near Las Vegas, Nevada, invited Bill to come out, and uh, that was a good decision, by the way. <clears throat> and I committed myself to serve him, and, and that's been such an honor. It's been a win-win. So I was out there in 10 years, went to... Um, Weaverville pastored there. Many of you know the Weaverville story. Had Gabe and Leah Valenzuela on my staff there. Yes, and so proud of Gabe. Two weeks ago, message of hope. Uh, and then I came here in 2008, work in a department called the Bethel Leaders Network with Dave and Taff Harvey, great leaders. And we help equip revival leaders from around the world who want to connect with Bethel, who want to be equipped in revival culture. And, and my wife and I have our own ministry called Igniting Hope Ministries. We've written many books, have online courses, and we have an assignment to ignite hope. There's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. We felt like the Lord said, Stephen, Wendy, I give you permission to be hopeless about anything I'm hopeless about. <laughs> Never once have we prayed, God, are you hopeless about that? Never once have we heard, uh, yes, we are. We're stumped here in heaven. <laughs> that situation's so bad, even prayer is pointless. <laughs> Hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present. And I and we have the power to help make it so. That's what hope is. Part of my team, Connie Jones, why don't you stand in Aaron, your husband, just they've served me so well for the, through the years. And they're a big part of the Bethel community here. And just, we want to honor you guys for your love for Jesus and what you do. And thank you for being such a strength in igniting hope. I've got some slides I'm going to show you. Um, I want to, if you've got this slide that has my wife and my dog, Buddy. How many of you like Havila's dog? Um, 
I mean, that dog, we'll talk about a fuzzy guy. <clears throat> well, that's my wife, Wendy. We've been married 45 years, love each other, and God's, uh, she's just such a, a understatement, special person. And then that's my dog, Buddy. He, he's, he's my joy mentor. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be like Buddy. <clears throat> he's got joy unbarkable. <laughs> and full of glory. But Buddy's got a few issues. So Buddy will be outside of our slider door in our kitchen, glass slider, and he's indicating he wants to come in, either through barking or just staring into the house. <clears throat> and so I'll go over there. This frequently happens. I will open the slider to let Buddy in, and Buddy just stands there outside the door looking in. And here's what I'm thinking is going on in Buddy's head. I thought I wanted to go in, but now I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to go in. Because if I go in, I might miss something out here. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking, Buddy! Will you just decide? You're powerful. You are powerful. You want to be in? Come in and attach faith. You're supposed to be in. You want to stay out? I bless it. Just decide. <laughs> How many of you know God speaks our language? David said, the Lord is my shepherd. God speaks to us through our passions, through our work, our hobbies. And the Lord says, Steve, will you just decide? Will you decide what you're going to believe? Will you decide really what you're supposed to do? Will you overcome this regret, this double-mindedness, and this doubt? So today, we're, we're going to go after that. Is that good with you? Here's some uh, <clears throat> quotes and some things that I've concluded. You're a Berean, like in Acts 17, you search the scriptures to see if these things are really so. Here's some things I believe are so. A bad decision made in faith has a greater likelihood of success than a good decision made in doubt. I'm not talking about sinning in faith. You're welcome, Dan. I'm here for you. <laughs> or a bad belief made in faith has a greater likelihood of success than a good belief made in doubt. And I, I'm, I'm making a point today of, of, of how we think. Uh, another conclusion I have is what we believe is more important than what we do. The new covenant is moved forward by good beliefs. We're called believers. It should tip us off on what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> the question of the hour is not, Lord, tell me what to do. What should I do? The question of the hour is, what should I believe? It's the superior question. If we're facing a problem or we're trying to get into a dream... The two questions to ask is, what do I need to believe? And then secondly, what do I need to do? And they need to be in that order. Another thing I want to say is repentance is a lifestyle, not an event. Repentance is a lifestyle. The word repent means to change the way you think. And it's... Certainly, 2 Corinthians 7 talks about godly sorrow leading us to repentance. But that godly sorrow is just the beginning point. We're not done repenting in an area until we have glistening hope in the area we're repenting of. I'm repenting today. I, I just want to reclaim the power of the word repentance. It's a great word. I'm changing how I think today. You made a good decision to be in church today. You made a good decision to watch online you're a good decision maker. 
Because it's, it's, it's a process. It's helping you change how you think. Another quote I want to share is, much of our tiredness is spiritual, not physical. Much of our tiredness is because we haven't attached faith to what we're doing. And we're doing what we're doing in doubt or out of duty and obligation. Anytime we do things out of doubt and duty and obligation, it makes us tired. It, by the way, in this meeting, the Lord is going to restore people's energy. And when we attach faith to who we are and what we're doing, we get energy, cheerfulness, and power. When we attach faith to who we are and what we're doing, we get energy, we get cheerfulness, and we get power. Let's look at some verses that have really impacted me. Matthew 4.4. 4. What, a, what a great verse. Jesus had just been water baptized and he, at the end of chapter 3, and he heard the father say this, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then he, he goes into the wilderness and the devil tempts him. <clears throat> How many of you know that the devil is the biggest trash talker? If, 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 woo, doubt, ooh, ooh, if, ooh, I thought that was true. If you are the son of God, he said, turn these stones into bread. And I love what Jesus said. But he answered and said, it is written. How many of you know the word of God is what we fight with? It's what we fight with in our thinking. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Say every word. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And I love that because the quality of our lives depends on our identifying what we believe God has said to us and then intentionally renewing our mind with that. The quality of our life depends on our identifying what we believe God has said to us in promise, in identity, and in direction. Promises in our biblical who we are, identity, and then in direction. I can put up with a lot of junk if I've got a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone say amen to that. I can put up with a lot of things I don't like around me if I've got a word. <laughs> I can put up with a lot of outward non-success if I've got a word. I can put up with an old car, an old phone, my hair becoming non-successful. <laughs> I can put up a lot if I got a word. <laughs> but if I don't have a word, the only way I can live is if things are going well. I remember my wife, Wendy, got a word. She was got all these, we were pastoring in Nevada in the 90s, and she got all these words about being a teacher. Well, she said, I hate public speaking. Matter of fact, I've had horrible experiences about it. That's a bad word. <laughs> but she started to lean into that. And, and, and then Bill Johnson's coming out. He comes out to our church and he preaches, and he's dreaming about what we're experiencing now. And he, he's just kind of talking and he says, there's coming a day when all you're going to need to say is peanut butter. And people will say, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> and Wendy got revelation. How many know when you get revelation from one word? By the way, the Lord's releasing revelation in this season over you. One word. It may not even be connected to something that somebody's saying, but you get. And Wendy got revelation. She said, I can say peanut butter. And she realized that her faith was not to be in her ability to speak, 
but in God's ability to anoint what she said. And it, it boom, she lived by that word. Fear come no, peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter. We still talk about that. Peanut butter. And now she's one of the best speakers I know. So Matthew 4:4, 4, 4, we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Another powerful verse is in uh, Romans 4:20 and 21. Now, this is talking about Abram, Abraham. He is held up to us. Uh, he, as an old covenant, Old Testament character, he's held up to us as the example of how to live the faith life. He pulled, Abraham pulled a new covenant experience into the old covenant. Unfortunately, many Christians in the new covenant pull an old covenant experience into the new covenant. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I mean, Paul said in, in, in uh, Galatians 3, Oh, foolish Galatians! Who has bewitched you? Who has cast a spell in? And the whole point he was making was that they had started out in faith, but they ended up by focusing more on their behaviors and conduct and their beliefs. He said, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The answer is the hearing of faith. Just a side note, the same way we get into the kingdom is the same way we advance in the kingdom. It's by hearing good news and believing it. But this is amazing in Romans 4. He did not waver, talking about Abraham, at the promise of God through unbelief. And I, as I analyze Abraham, I saw some wavering. Ishmael, major waver. That's not just a waver, that's a train wreck. I mean, that's like, hello! But I love how God analyzes our own journey and how he sees us. He sees our faith differently than we see it. The, the, the accuser of the brethren, the trash talker, see, you, you don't believe enough, you're not wrong with you. Something you need, let's just laugh at all that, by the way. Ha <laughs> ha. Always accusing me, always wanting me to focus on what I'm not rather than what I am. So, I mean, this verse, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. Say, strengthened in faith. It says, giving glory to God and being fully convinced, say fully convinced, fully convinced, that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And so the goal of where we're going in our beliefs is to be fully convinced. And he was strengthened in faith. So it was a process. Just say, it's a process. I notice here that Abraham was to strengthen his beliefs about specific beliefs. It wasn't just a nebulous, well, I believe in God, which is obviously good. But there was something that he was to say, I'm going to believe that. I'm deciding to believe that. And I'm going to get a plan to strengthen that belief. And for him, it was that he's the father of a multitude. All right, so I, that's, Steve, will you decide what you're going to believe? All right, Lord, I'm going to believe I'm righteous. I'm going to believe I'm loved. I'm going to believe I'm powerful. I'm going to believe I release love. And, and, okay, you decide, but that's the beginning of it. Then you go on the repentance journey. Repentance is a lifestyle. I'm going to figure out how to get that belief stronger because it's not going to happen just by osmosis. So I'm out there in, in the desert, hardly influencing sagebrush. <laughs> and I'm starting to get this. All right, Steve, I want you to decide what to believe. Here, here's some things I want you to start believing. 
I want you to start believing you're a radical influencer of nations. I want you to start believing you're an author. I want you to start believing you release the supernatural. <clears throat> I said, well, Lord, I thought you said thou shalt not lie. <laughs> Could you please be consistent? Shouldn't I wait until all those things have happened in my life before I start believing it? I like to laugh at things. Let's just laugh at that. Ha <laughs> ha. He said, well, let me ask you a question. Do you wait for an apple tree to have apples on it before you call it an apple tree? Ah, uh, no, Lord. Even if the apple tree is too young to have apples on it, we're not, con we're not confused about its identity. It's just an apple tree that's too young to have apples, but we know it's an apple tree. We don't get our identity out of what we've done. We get our identity out of what we're created to do. And I was just I go on, I went on a journey, strength I, I, to convince, fully convince. I was trying to convince me. Because my stronghold says no. The trash talker said no. The, the best you can hope for is average. <laughs> Don't you remember you're less than other people, Steve? Don't you remember? <laughs> But I dared to believe. It's risky to start believing. It's risky to say, I'm going to start believing this. I'm going to start believing this. And it's not just, that's just the beginning. That's where the repentance starts. Sorry, I didn't believe I was powerful. Sorry, I didn't believe I was righteous. But that's what you say. And that's what you're telling me to strengthen my faith in. And it, I love it says he strengthened his faith, giving glory to God. Woo -hoo. We don't strengthen our faith by just constantly analyzing our faith. We give glory. He's going to do it. Lord, I'm so excited to see how, to see how you're going to do this. I'm so excited to see how you're going to finish this. God, you're good. Thank you for what Jesus did. And I love this. Look at Romans 14, 5. Got two more verses for you. You guys good out there? This is a powerful verse. <clears throat> one person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. Say fully convinced. Fully convinced. In, my own mind. in my own mind. Again, this is part of the, the, what's going to happen to us as we become conformed to the image of Christ. It's not just in our behavior, it's in our thinking. And fully convinced is the goal that we're going after. And this is interesting. You got, it seems to be talking about Sabbaths. And you got one guy says, it's one day. Another says, ah, no, I think it's every day is a Sabbath. <laughs> says, let each be fully convinced in his own mind. How many of you know that in some areas, two people can have this, a different opinion and both be right. And again, I'm not talking about sinning or things black and white, but the Lord, we're powerful people in the different seasons of our life, different assignments, different callings. The Lord's going to have you conclude something different than what somebody else concludes. Just because everybody doesn't agree with you on what should be emphasized doesn't make them wrong. Yeah, that's good news. Look at another verse, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. This is one of the most empowering verses in the whole Bible. It says, but each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a what? I mean, anytime you find out that God loves something, should kind of, hmm, someone just go, hmm, 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 hmm. 
<laughs> hmm. The principle here is that God loves a cheerful decider. It's, it's beyond, obviously, financial giving is a great place to start to, to have cheerfulness. But it, it's, it's bigger than that. God loves a cheerful decider. And this is, says, this, this verse says, hey, the Lord basically says, I trust you to figure it out, decide in your heart. I trust your connection with God. This is kind of scary. This is a scary verse for preachers. <laughs> oh, man, I, try, I, try. I don't know if I can trust my people. <laughs> I got to put a little bit of guilt in them. And, you know, like, oh. <laughs> Woo-hoo. The, the, the greatest, the, the doctrines that have the greatest ability to launch us and set us free also have the greatest ability to be abused. And we can't just be, let the fear of abuse stop us from pursuing and pressing into the deeper things of God that are going to set us free and are going to put rocket boosters on our lives. But this verse, it talks about giving. And, and what do I give myself to? What are my passions? What do I give my time to? What, what, what do I commit myself to? What responsibilities? And it says, in those, God loves a cheerful decider. Now, cheerfulness is the evidence that we've attached faith to what we're doing. Cheerfulness is the evidence. A lack of cheerfulness in a commitment, assignment, responsibility is almost always because I have an attached faith to it. I'm doing it out of duty and obligation, or I'm doing it in doubt. Some people do their jobs that way. Some people do their marriages that way. Some people, uh, their, their ministry assignments. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trapped. I'm trapped. <laughs> Woo-hoo. No, you're powerful. Just say, I'm powerful. I say, buddy, you're powerful. You're not trapped out there. So I, I, I'm, you know, when, when we do things out of duty and obligation, I thought, well, you know, I'm faithful. I'm here in the meeting. Don't really want to be here. But I'm here. I'm one of the remnant. Now, faithfulness is not just showing up. It's how you think when you show up. You show up full of faith. Imagine that, faithful. Hmm. <laughs> hmm, that's good. I know. So what I'm doing in my life, and this is just on this area of fully convinced, I'm looking for areas where I'm not cheerful. I'm looking for commitments, responsibilities. I mean, it can be as simple as paying the bills, uh, it, it can be as major as a key relationship within our lives. And, and, and I'm noticing that where I am not cheerful, it's almost always because I have an attached faith to that area. And the Lord says, Steve, will you decide? Will you decide? Clarify your options. Get a good process of decision making. And then decide and attach faith to what you're going to do. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I seek to attach faith to every day. I've got this declaration clicker. It's by my coffee pot. Mm, this thing's spiritually flammable. <laughs> it's a tally counter. And I say, this is going to be a great day. This is a day of victory. This is a day of breakthrough. This is a day of answered prayer. Usually when I say it, I don't feel it. But I've decided. I, I, I've, said, I've decided what I'm going to believe, and I'm going to repent when I wake up in the morning. I'm going I'm to do that. I'm going to strengthen my beliefs. Everywhere I go, revival breaks out. I lay hands on the sick, and they recover. 
And I'm getting in a process of getting fully convinced. Sports teams, uh, before the game, they're not pessimistic in the locker room. They're not in there saying, well, I hope we don't lose too badly. <laughs> Let's try not to get hurt. <laughs> ah, they're attaching faith to the game. As part, of the, as part of athletes know that. They know they not only need to understand their role, their assignment, to get endurance, to understand the opponent, to uh, get a game plan, but they need to attach faith. And I, I was just hearing this morning for people in this meeting and people watching online, there's something supernatural that's getting infused in people. There's literally, I see people in this room that everybody's going to be blessed, but there's going to be a, a number of you who are going to get something in your life and it's going to ignite something. Because you realize the trash talker, the devil, I get into the game. I get, first thing, I'm doubting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't even be out here. I'm going to stuff your shot. Who knows? He might have said something about my mother, too. <laughs> but I began to realize wow, okay, doubt and insecurity. I'm going to face that for the rest of my life. I'm going to try to get in the game, games I don't even believe I belong in. Get into a higher place where the Lord's using me beyond what I think I should be used. And the trash talker is trying to reduce me back down to where with the old lives. So I say thank you, Lord, today for that we live by a word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for revelation on what to believe. Thank you for Abraham's example of specific beliefs that he strengthened. He got a plan. Thank you, Lord, for specific beliefs that you're highlighting in our lives that we're actually to work at believing. I'll use that language. Work at, get a plan to believe that at a higher level. Thank you, Father, for being fully convinced in our own mind. Thank you that you're leading us there in the choices that we make. Thank you for a good process of decision-making. Includes the word, includes good people in our lives. Thank you for that. But thank you, you're leading us to be fully convinced. Thank you that you're breaking off doubt, double-mindedness. Thank you, you're breaking off duty and obligation and just doing things out of... Uh, compulsion. Thank you, Lord, for cheerfulness being the indicator that we've attached faith to what we're doing. Thank you for your grace in this season to go after where we have an attached faith. Thank you for help in those areas. Thank you for even the areas where we feel like we have no good choices. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for helping us there. And thank you, Jesus, uh, just for the powerful thing that you trust us more than we even know. If you guys receive this word, by the way, uh, my book, Fully Convinced, has this, ignitinghopeacademy.com. We've got a course running right now called Fully Convinced. It's an eight-week online course if you want more of this. If you receive this message today, say, I receive it. I receive it. I'll never be the same again. Something happened in me today. It was supernatural. It's going to increase. I'm moving towards being fully convinced. I'm strengthening my faith. And that makes me glad. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise because he's doing it. Yes. Man, how many guys are like, whoo, you're just, whoo, 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 whoo. can we just give Pastor Steve, Steve a big hand, that was awesome. Whoo. 
Praise God. Why don't you go ahead and stand, but just hold your seats there. How many of you guys feel like you just want to go repent somewhere? You've never been inspired to just go repent more right now. I love that. So many, I just sit there and write down every word. I'm just like meditating. So good. So powerful. How many of you guys just, I, I really believe in the preaching of the word, deliverance is actually happening in the room. You know, the deliverance is a part of the, of the believer's life. Deliverance is the children's bread. How many of you guys have walked into this place depressed or just battling something in your mind you just can't shake? Yeah? Oftentimes, it's, it's demonic oppression. Oftentimes, it's, we're in a war. It doesn't mean you're a less than believer. It means you're actually doing something. You're forging ahead. And when you hear a word of hope, you hear a word that, that illuminates things. It begins to break things off and chisel away and break things off. And so... I just, I just love it. That's so powerful. Hey, if you're in this room right now, and maybe you're hearing this and you're going, I don't, I don't know that I've ever first surrendered my life to Christ. You know, uh, there's, there was a man once named John Wesley, and John Wesley was a powerful, powerful preacher, and he used to preach a lot. But before he got saved, history, history tells us that he had a mental assent towards the Word of God. He would hear it, and he agreed but there wasn't a godly sorrow that had worked in his heart to bring about a heart change. And so maybe you're in this room right now and you'd say, you know what, I've had a mental ascent towards the things of God. I agree, but I don't know that I've had a heart change. How do you know the difference? Oftentimes, when we haven't been born again yet, we do things that are wrong, but we don't have deep conviction about it. After you get saved, God doesn't take away your ability to sin. He just takes away your ability to be any good at it. You feel what, what the Bible calls godly sorrow over stuff. <laughs> that's a good thing, amen? Because that's the Holy Spirit inside of us, the Father saying, you're way too good for that. You're way too awesome to be doing that. That voice, the voice of conviction is that what's actually mentoring us and shaping us and helping us grow into the image of Christ. How many of you guys know I'm, I'm closer to the image of Christ today than I was two years ago? That's, that's a good thing. Amen. But maybe you're in this room right now and you say, I don't know that I have that voice yet. I don't know that the God's leading me from the inside. I got, you know, I'm, I'm around church. I enjoy, I'm around stuff, but I, I want God to lead me from the inside. I want to give you an opportunity for to do what Jesus calls becoming born again. And that's where your old life dies with Christ on the cross and you get buried with him in a grave called baptism and then you're resurrected with him in the newness of life. It is a supernatural experience where his presence comes on the inside of you and he lives his life through you. Amen? So maybe you're here, you're online or you're in a great room and you'd say, man, I'm ready to give my life to Christ. This looks like leaving your old life behind. You can't save yourself. I had a couple of people show up my door this last week from a different religion. And I released the Kraken, Dan. I just went for it. And by the end, they were doing this. I, no I looked down and noticed they were backing up. You can't save yourself. No amount of good works can save you. No amount of revival stuff can save you. It is only being justified by the blood of Jesus and putting your trust in the blood and what Christ has done for us that has any power to save a human being. No amount of religious works can save you. It's a lie. It's a lie. Only the, the blood of Jesus has power to save. If you're in this room right now and you say, you know what? That's me, I wanna surrender my life to Christ. Why would you wait, why would you leave to go do that? The Bible says now is the time of salvation. Nobody's guaranteed another breath out when you walk out these doors. We have no promise of it, but what you do have right now is hope because you're in this room and God is drawing you right now. So if that's you and you'd say, I wanna give my life to Jesus, raise your hand up, just take courage, do something bold and say, that's me. Come on, come on, God bless you guys. Yes, who else? Anybody else? That's awesome. Anybody else? Online, just type in the chat, I need Jesus. Man, he is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. He is the savior of the world. Come on, Jesus is victorious over all the stuff that you want defeated in your life. He comes into your life. Anybody else? Raise your hand up. 
Come on, God bless you guys. Hey, you guys, just raise your hand. Would you do me a favor? Or yourselves a favor, whatever. Grab your stuff. Come out of your seat. Come down here, right over here to the Freedom Banner, and they're gonna pray for you. You're gonna get so saved, you're gonna get born again to the bone. <laughs> Filled with the Holy Spirit. You're gonna discover who God says you are. Amen. I feel like there's people in this room that didn't respond because you're afraid. I'm gonna tell you right now, fear is a liar. First thing you gotta die to is, what are people gonna think about me? Who cares? <laughs> Amen. All right, hallelujah. That's good, okay. Ministry team, if you're here, if you could make your way forward right now, we wanna pray for anybody here that needs a miracle. Hey, we've been seeing crazy miracles happen here at the end of this service. The other day, God told me there's somebody here with a right hip that uh, went through a surgery that didn't go well and they're still in pain and somebody standing right there just came up front, got healed, got prayer, went up and down the stairs, just completely healed and shocked. It was just amazing. God's doing miracles. He's just here. So ministry team, come on, make your way forward and uh, praise God. All right. Sweet. God bless you guys. Have a great night. Hey, listen, youth camp, kids camp, get your kids signed up. Get them there. It's going to be an amazing time. And then we have online discipleship that starts at 1230 today. Bethel.com forward slash start here. Get there. Follow Jesus. Bless you guys.